Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Today I've got another puzzle from the recent World Sudoku Championship, so this should be quite interesting. Um, this one's a little killer, uh, which is a fairly traditional type at the championship. Um, the name, I don't really know. I presume it comes from the fact that, as in a killer Sudoku, some sums are important. Um, and little because not all the sums are provided or something like that. Certainly there's no cages. Now, the way it works is that you get a sum given to you and an arrow, and the arrow is pointing along a diagonal. And if you add up all the numbers on that diagonal to the end of the puzzle, it gives you that sum. That's it. That's the rules. Fairly simple. And I'm going to try and kind of take you through a solve of this if I can. So, Hello and apologies for interrupting Mark's video, but I wanted to tell you uh, I got some more information about this puzzle from the World Sudoku Championship and I thought I should share it with you. The author of this puzzle is Stefan Heiner, who is one of, I think, Germany's most famous puzzle makers, um, supports the German Sudoku com community for years and years and has something of um, a signature type of puzzle for him is the little killer, which is, of course, what you're seeing. Uh, in this video. Um, now I'm lucky enough I have already solved this puzzle and it's beautiful so I think you'll all enjoy it. Um, now a little anecdote about this puzzle um, basically this was no trouble in the uh, in the championship for Tan Tan Dai and for Kotamor and Ishii um, but uh, Jan Svarina almost caught up five minutes of a disadvantage in the championship uh, versus Li Chun Ming, the incredible young soul from China on this puzzle. And Li Chun Ming had a real problem with it. So th this is an interesting puzzle, I think, because it can stump even one of the very, very finest Sudoku uh, solvers in the world today. So when you're solving it, if you manage to race through it, you can take some pride in that. And that's enough from me. Uh, you can obviously, before I start, it's worth telling you, you can try and solve this yourself. I'm putting the um, link to the puzzle in our software in the description below. And uh, of course, do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to um, sponsor us on Patreon if you can manage that. But um, otherwise, here we go. So... As always with a little killer, first of all, it's worth noting that in this one, there's no givens in the grid. So we're going to have to work off the clues. And there's not a lot of those outside the grid. So they're all going to be significant, I imagine. But here's an important starting point. 72, that's a huge number, I think. That must be the biggest possible number you can get in a little killer. And that must mean that all the numbers on this diagonal are 9, 8, and 7. The reason for that is, obviously, those three within one box must all be different. And at the maximum, 9, 8, and 7 makes 24. Three lots of 24 makes 72. So every one of the cells on that long diagonal must be 7, 8, or 9. Um, this 24 is not so helpful. Obviously, it's a much smaller number. But 1, 2, 3 there, and 1, 2, 3 there would be 12. And then there would be various ways of making up 12 in the middle part here. 9, 2, and 1, 8, 3, and 1, 7, and either of the two combinations that make 5. So that's not the next place for us to go. Where is the next place for us to go? Um, ah, definitely this 5 is a telling clue. That's so small for a 4 um, four cell diagonal. Worth remembering that obviously one of the rules in Killer Sudoku, or rather one of the, um, there isn't a rule in Little Killer that numbers can't repeat because otherwise both the two clues we've looked at would be impossible. But five must be made up of three ones and a two. That's the only way you can get there, especially because two of them are in the same box. Now, one and two have been used up, and we've got a seven clue, so that must be made up of three, four in this box. And then the remaining numbers must be five and six. So they make 11, so to make 20 on their diagonal, that must be where the nine is in this box. So 
got another number placed there. Um, 42 is quite big as well. 9 and 8, 17, 34, yep. Yeah, we can, um, right, the only way we can make up 42, given that this can't be 9 anymore, is with 9 and 8 here, and we can tell from that 9 which order they're in. That's 17, same thing down here. Because of the same 9, that's 34. This must be the 8. This must be the 7. Okay, so we've kind of worked this corner of the grid pretty hard now and got a lot of its bits in. Um, down here, now this 15 is useful now because we've got 9s ruling out, ruled out from both of these cells by being in the same column already. So to make up 15, if it's not 9 and 6, it must be 8 and 7. Remember, we can only use the rule that the numbers must be different in a clue if they're all in the same box. Um, this 15 here could be 9, could be 654, or it could be 9 with one of the other three. With, well, with two smaller numbers is what I mean, sorry. So that's not all that helpful. Maybe you need to go across here, look, that 4... We all know that 4 and 2 numbers must be 1 and 3. 16. That could be 2, 5, 9, 8, 2, 6, or 7, um, 4, 5. Those are the three possibilities. Can't quite rule them down further at the moment that 34 if the numbers all had to be different that would be 98764 but they don't so don't know on that one um <clears throat> these clues are fairly middling numbers ah Well, look, the 8s and 9s that we've got here, they are ruling out some of the possibilities from the middle there. Um, ah, and look, these 1s, how they're acting on this central box is, yeah, this is good. They're putting 1 either on in the bottom, you know, in one of these two cells because... It's obviously ruled out of that diagonal, and these two ones rule it out of those cells and those cells. So one must be there or there, and that is quite useful because now we had a minimum one, two, three going on in these boxes. That's six there, and another six up here. That's 12. So it's got to be at least 12 here. And the lowest numbers they can now be, because they can't be 1, are 2 and 3, and that makes that a 7. So we've actually made significant progress in the central box. And now that's established these this whole diagonal in some way. Um, can we keep using that? I mean, we can just do some regular Sudoku placing, just using a bit of Snyder notation here. Eights, because of where they are up there, must be in one of those cells. Nines must be in that column. Mm, that's not really the way to go. This can no longer be eight here because of that eight. And this can't be seven. Now, on this 16... I think we worked out there was only one combination with each of 9 and 7. So this is either 9, 5, 2, that's still possible, or 7, 5, 4. So these cells can only be from 2, 4, and 5. Uh, which means 6 must be in these, in the 19 clue. They must include a 6 in it. Hmm. Ah, okay, this 10 is now useful. We've got 1, 2, 3 fixed in the box. 
10 therefore must be made up of 4 and 6. And 20, this has to be 3, the maximum number possible, with 8 and 9. That 3 resolves that cell. So we get 3, 2, and 1 there. That can't be the 2 anymore. Does that resolve this? Um, 5, 9, 2 is possible. And 4, 7, 5. This can't be a 4. Oh, yeah, it could, it could be a 4. OK, but we've got 4, 6. So 5, 7 are the remaining 2 cells in this box. They add up to 12. So this 23 needs another 11 to go with it. There's quite a lot of ways of making 11 and 2 more cells, unfortunately. Ah, but this 9 has resolved this cell down here. That makes that an 8. Um, that puts an 8 here by normal Sudoku rules, and that's resolved these 8s. There's one there, so we've got all the 8s in the group suddenly. Wasn't quite expecting that. Um, so those 6s. I'm sure. Right, how about this 34? Can't have an 8 here. This could still be 9 and 7. No, it's not, it's not a big enough number quite to really rule that down to something. Um, ah, how about this 15? Yeah, it's got to have the 9 in that set of 3. So 9 goes with 2 and 4, or 1 and 5. That can't be the 3. Um, so one of these is a 6 again. One of those is a 6 in row 7 or 8. One of those is a 6. I'm not sure if it helps to know that that puts a 6 in this row. In the bottom central box. Um, still got four, five, and six to place in the central box. Ah, oh, that one. Yeah, I should really check these as we get them. That's resolved that two and one. That two fixes that. There's a one. That resolves this three and one pair. You keep having to look around. What a nice puzzle. Um, no, oh, and that peters out a little bit there. Oh no, look, one, one there. So one can't be here because of that one. That's a one. And that resolves this pair here. And the last one in the grid goes in there. Um, now, 11 to add on to the 5 and 7 can't be 2, 9 or 8, 3, as those numbers all appear there. So it must be either 5, 6 or 4, 7. And this one can't be the 4 because that would make that one the 7. So I'm not quite sure there. But the only 3 in the top row now that's possible is there. Okay, that fixes the four. That resolves six and four there. Um, that can't be a seven anymore, so that is a five-six pair now. And in fact, we know from the six that we just placed which one it is. So, uh, this four, we've known that for one, that should be a five. This pair here is now a six-four pair. That adds up to 10. The other th two cells must add up to 6, which could be 3, 3, or 2, 4. Ooh. And in fact, the 6 now is narrowed down to just that cell. The 9 must be there. Six, six, now, this 34, we've got 15 to start with, one at the end, that's 16. The other two both have to be nines. There we go, that's helpful. 
Um, right, so with a 7, that must be 7, 4, 5, which must be in that order. These are 6 and 2, which add up to 8. We need another 11. This one's 2, 3, or 4. Oh, well, look, we know, we know what this one is from the column. It must be a 7, so that's 4 there, 3 there. That resolves our 2, 3 pair. The 4, 6 pair has been resolved. That fixes the 2, 6 pair there. Not many ambiguities left in the grid now. 2, 3 here, yeah, they're resolved by that one. Okay, so the rest should be just finishing off with normal Sudoku, I would think. Um, three, four, seven to go there. Six, four there, two there. Just sort of attacking it row by row. Now row six, four, six and five, two and four there. Three, five and six. This is seven and five, and here we go. We're just about done. So, very neat puzzle there. Um, let's just check. Looks good. Okay, so that's the little killer from the World Sudoku Championship. Um, well done if you got through that with relatively little difficulty. I mean, it was certainly all available, but if you haven't done this puzzle type before, it might have proved a bit tricky finding which clues to really focus on at the start. As always, finding the ones that seem to have very high numbers or very low numbers is a good way in. But that's always given the uh, number of cells involved. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic, and bye for now.